In the previous episode, we discussed the three kinds of fault finding. We also connected Lord Rama to our present times through live examples of Goswami Tulsidas. Today in this episode, we will find a different perspective on viewing the marriage of Sri Rama and Sita. We will understand the relevance of Ravana and Kumbhakarna. We will learn the importance of satsanga and the need to accept our limitations. We cover two explanations of Lord Vishnu having the footprints of sage Bhrigu on his chest. Also, we will see the intent behind the creation of Ram Charitmanas and Vinay Patrika. I hope you find this episode interesting. In the marriage hall of Sri Rama and Sita, the royal architect erected four jewel studded pillars. As a result, the reflection of the divine couple lit up the entire marriage hall. The guests stood spellbound. The whole room had become Sita Ram Maya. Like the jewel studded pillars, our hearts should reflect the image of the divine couple. Sita Ram should permeate our entire being. Only then can we enjoy the wedding celebrations. King Janaka set up the wedding altar. Pandits muttered Vedic hymns. Lord Rama and Sita pronounced their marriage vows and circled the holy fire. The marriage enchanted a jnani like Janaka. What to speak of an ordinary man? Ram Siya Sundara Pratichai Jagamagat Mani Khambana Mahi Manahu Magana Rati Dhari Bahu Rupa Dekhata Ram Biyahu Anupa Even today, devotees celebrate the marriage of Sita Ram enthusiastically. Lord Rama married in Treta Yuga. So why celebrate his marriage today? On being asked this pertinent question, Tulsi Das Ji said, In the past, Sage Vashishta, Muni Shatanand and King Dasharat were all present. But I was not there. In this marriage ceremony, I shall see Lord Rama as the bridegroom with my own eyes. So essentially, we should either bring Sri Rama into our lives or connect to his life. In the Ramayana, Lord Rama slew the two demons, Kumbhakarna and Ravana. Who are the Kumbhakarna and Ravana of our lives? These demons live inside us in the form of lust, pride, greed and attachment. Most people compromise with their weaknesses and live happily with these demons. Lord Rama does not interfere in the lives of such ignorant beings. When we humbly accept our deficiencies and invite Lord Rama to slay these demons, Grace flows into our lives. Rama Atarkya Buddhi Manabani Mata Hamara Asasunahi Sayani Lord Rama is beyond mind, speech and material logic. While delivering satsanga, the speaker speaks logically to convey meaning and sense. However, no satsanga has the potential to describe Lord Rama because Sri Rama transcends logic. For example, a philosopher wanted to measure the end of the sky. He selected two candidates, a mosquito and an eagle. The mosquito flew for a few hours and returned tired. On being asked, the mosquito replied proudly, As far as I can see, the sky is endless. Now it was the eagle's turn. The eagle leaped confidently into the sky. A thousand years flew by. Finally, it returned and said, the sky has no end. What took the mosquito two hours to know took the eagle a thousand years. What do we learn? It is impossible to measure that which is boundless. At most we can realize our limitations and accept them as the relative truth. Even in the Ramcharit Manas, Ka Gushandi, the crow saint, tells Garuda, the eagle, Tumahi adi khaga masaka prajanta, naba udahi nahi pavahi anta, timi ragupati mahi ma avagaha, from a tiny insect to a mighty eagle like you are trying to reach the end of the sky. Similarly, every human being is on a spiritual journey, but not a single soul is an inch close to the supreme truth. That is why the Vedas say, Bhagavan is indescribable or anirvachaniya in Sanskrit. Well, then what is the point of listening to satsanga? The answer to this question lies in the Vinay Patrika. Goswamiji writes, Instead of gossiping and engaging in worldly talk, we should discuss Harikatha. 
when people hear satsanga they process it with their conditioned minds a grammarian analyzes the diction and language of the speaker but bhagwan only considers the mood and intent of his devotee not his words when a little child stammers the parents only notice its innocence his words become secondary likewise even if our speech is incompetent lord rama absorbs our bhakti and bhav goswami tulsidas has beautiful works that are rich in mood and poetry in the vinay patrika he discusses his flaws in great detail one cannot help but praise his humility goswami ji writes guna tumhara samujhai nije dosa find flaws in ourselves not in others find virtue in bhagwan the lord of sita keeping this verse in mind tulsidas ji wrote the ramcharit manas and vinay patrika in the ramcharit manas goswami ji lists the divine qualities of lord rama in contrast vinay patrika is a list of all his shortcomings thus the two scriptures are a jewel among bhakti literature jukati bedi puni poi ahi ramcharit baratag goswami tulsidas compares the qualities of lord rama to a thread and his poetry to a pearl he intends to string the pearl of poetry to the thread of divine qualities can we not compare the qualities of lord rama to the pearl and the thread to poetry well goswami tulsidas has used the metaphor intentionally to string a pearl we need to make a hole in it lord rama is flawless then how can we compare lord rama to a pearl the thread fills the hole in the pearl making it presentable thus the virtues of lord rama cover up the defects of poetry furthermore devotees can keep stringing pearls of their poetry in the never ending thread of divine virtues pahi rahi sajjana bimala ura sobha ati anurag now there are two pearl necklaces one is the ramcharit manas the necklace of virtues the other is vinay patrika the tale of our shortcomings which necklace should we wear well we should wear the garland of divine virtues and put the garland of our shortcomings on bhagwan why the world does not buy our shortcomings lord rama is an ocean of compassion he not only accepts our shortcomings but also transforms them in praise of shri bharata lord rama said bharat i hear you are very humble Shri Bharat answered O Rama when you wear the garland of my shortcomings on your auspicious neck all my flaws turn into golden ornaments hence our ultimate welfare lies in accepting our shortcomings then surrender them to the lotus feet of Lord Rama during their first meeting Shri Rama asked Lord Hanuman to introduce himself instead of giving his introduction as the son of the wind god Hanuman ji said Eku mai mant moh bas kutila hridaya agyam Here I am unintelligent attached deceitful and ignorant Lord Rama said O Brahmana I asked for the tale of your upbringing not suffering Sri Hanuman replied O Rama jeevas in the material world only have tales of suffering it is you who play pastimes we will hear about your pastimes you hear our suffering This dual approach is the path to supreme welfare. Lord Vishnu bears the footmarks of sage Bhrigu on his chest. There are two ways of looking at the pastime. Some scholars establish the supremacy of the Brahmin class. A Brahmin is so pious. Lord Narayana bears the footprints of a Brahmin on his chest. But bhaktas do not sanction this definition. When a devotee hears this pastime, he grows restless. Tears roll down his cheeks as he recalls the mercy of Narayana. Shri Hari endured the assault on his chest. The Lord is so merciful to have honored the kick of a sage. If we accept the Brahminical view, pride comes. But hearing the perspective of a bhakta melts the heart. The divine footprints of Lord Vishnu invite us. He who honored his attacker is freely available to pure devotees. So Sant Rahim rightly said, क्षमा बडन को चाहिए छोटन को उत्पात का रही महरि का घट्यो जो भृगु मारी लात इट वाज नॉट भृगुस ग्लोरी बट नारायणास मर्सी रामचरित मानस मेंशंस हाउ द रुद्रगणास वर कर्स्ड टू बिकम रावणा एंड कुंभकर्णा प्रताप भानु द मोनार्क बिकेम रावणा द एसोसिएट्स ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु जय एंड विजय अपीयर्ड एज रावणा एंड कुंभकर्णा 
these personalities were very dear to bhagwan yet they experienced a downfall indeed these events are a red alert for devotees they warn us to stay on our toes without being complacent and proud we should learn from the mistakes committed in the past